In the stillness of the night, when shadows dance under the moon's pale light, therein lies a mystery as old as time itself, the enigma of the vampire. These fascinating entities have been a source of intrigue, captivating our minds and hearts. Their allure transcends the mere physical. It's their charm, their charisma, their enigmatic nature that keeps us hooked. From the dark gothic tales of the 19th century to their modern incarnations in pop culture, vampires have always held a special place in our collective imagination. They're the epitome of the forbidden, the dangerous, the devilishly alluring. And yet, they're so human, so like us, with their struggles and their passions. So what is it about these creatures of the night that keeps us so enthralled? Is it their immortality, their power, or perhaps their dark romanticism? As we delve into the shadows, let's uncover the truth. The vampire, a being shrouded in ancient folklore, has a history as rich and as varied as the cultures they appear in. Our journey into the past begins with the Mesopotamians, one of the earliest civilizations in history. These ancient people told tales of Lilithu, a demoness who drank the blood of young men and children. This blood-sucking creature, believed to be the earliest depiction of a vampire, was a far cry from the suave, cape-wearing gentleman we imagine today. Moving westward, we encounter the Greeks, who added their own spin to the vampire narrative. They believed in the existence of Rikolakas, reanimated corpses that rose from the grave to drink the living's blood. But unlike the Mesopotamian Lilitu, the Vrikolakas were not demons. They were humans who had led sinful lives and were punished with eternal thirst after death. Next, we turn to the Romans. They had their version of vampires in the Strigas, nocturnal birds of prey. These creatures were said to prey on infants, draining them of their life essence. Interesting, isn't it, how each culture added layers to the vampire myth, reflecting their own fears and beliefs. But it wasn't until the Middle Ages, with the spread of Christianity in Europe, that the vampire began to take on a form we might recognize. The church propagated the idea of the undead, creatures that defied God's will by refusing to stay dead. They were seen as abominations, unholy entities that had to be destroyed. In Eastern Europe, folk tales of creatures like the Slavic Nosferatu and the Romanian Strigoi began to circulate. These tales depicted vampires as reanimated corpses that rose from their graves at night to feed on the living. From these ancient tales, the image of the vampire began to take form, evolving and adapting through the centuries. From demonic entities to cursed humans, from nocturnal birds to reanimated corpses, the vampire has come a long way, reflecting the deepest fears and darkest fantasies of our collective consciousness. As centuries passed, the vampire mythos continued to evolve, taking on new forms and characteristics. The Middle Ages and the Renaissance, two critical periods in history, played host to an array of changes in the vampire narrative. In the Middle Ages, vampire myths were often entwined with religious beliefs. Vampires were seen as supernatural beings that defied the natural order of life and death. They were believed to be souls in torment, unable to find peace in the afterlife and thus returning to the mortal realm to wreak havoc. It was during this period that the idea of repelling vampires with holy water and crucifixes became popular. Talk about bad reactions to a splash of water and a piece of wood. As we move into the Renaissance, the vampire narrative took on a more romantic and aristocratic air. Vampires were no longer just tormented souls, they were sophisticated and beguiling, often portrayed as nobility with a taste for the finer things in life, including, of course, a fine vintage of blood type O negative. Perhaps this was the era when vampires truly became wine connoisseurs. This period also saw the introduction of common vampire characteristics that we recognize today. The fang teeth, the aversion to sunlight, and the hypnotic allure. These traits became so popular that they've stuck around longer than a vampire's lifespan. But it wasn't all glamour and glitz for our fanged friends. The Renaissance also brought about the concept of a vampire's reflection, or lack thereof, in mirrors. Can you imagine the horror of not being able to check your appearance before a night of, well, neck nibbling? This evolution of the vampire mythos, tinged with both darkness and decadence, set the stage for the modern interpretation of vampires we are familiar with today. These enduring characteristics, born out of centuries of folklore and fear, have cemented the vampire as a captivating figure in our collective imaginations. From tormented souls to charismatic nobles, the evolution of the vampire is a tale as immortal as the creatures themselves. Not all vampires are created equal, some are portrayed as malevolent, others as misunderstood beings. Let's dive into the fascinating world of vampire dichotomy, 
where the line between good and evil is as blurred as a vampire's reflection in a mirror. We've all heard of Count Dracula, the epitome of the evil vampire. Brooding, bloodthirsty, and unapologetically wicked, Dracula is the classic embodiment of the vampire villain. His insatiable thirst for blood and power, coupled with his charm and charisma, make him the quintessential bad boy of the vampire world. However, the vampire narrative took a turn in the late 20th century, with authors and filmmakers introducing the concept of good vampires. Take Louis from Anne Rice's interview with the vampire, for instance. He is a vampire with a conscience, struggling with his inherent bloodlust and longing for his lost humanity. Then we have Angel from the Buffy the Vampire Slayer series, who is quite literally a vampire with a soul. Cursed by gypsies, he feels remorse for his past actions and dedicates his undead life to fighting evil. These vampires are the antithesis of Dracula, showing us that vampires, like humans, are not just black and white, but exist in shades of grey. In more recent times, we've seen the Twilight series, where the Cullens, a family of vegetarian vampires, refuse to drink human blood and coexist peacefully with humans. This portrayal further blurs the line between good and evil, suggesting that vampires can choose their path, just like humans. However, these good vampires often face an internal conflict, a tug of war between their monstrous nature and their desire to be good. This struggle is what makes them compelling and relatable, as it mirrors our own struggles with morality and ethics. So whether they're the sinister night-stalking predators or the brooding, guilt-ridden romantics, vampires continue to fascinate us with their complexity and depth. Whether they are the heroes or villains of the story, vampires continue to captivate our imagination with their endless possibilities. Imagine, if you will, a world where vampires are not just the stuff of folklore and fiction, but a reality in 2023. Picture this, instead of worrying about the usual suspects like climate change, world economy, and technological advancements, we've got a whole new concern to lose sleep over. And I mean that quite literally. In this world, the night isn't just for catching Zs or scrolling through social media. It's when the real action happens. The modern vampire, our hypothetical creature of the night, isn't some caped aristocrat lurking in a castle. Oh no, they're the suave Wall Street trader, the charismatic pop star, or the mysterious neighbor who always seems to get their groceries delivered after sundown. Let's ponder how society might react. Initially, there would be fear, of course. Panic, even. But humans are adaptable creatures. We'd learn to coexist, wouldn't we? We'd have sundown curfews and sunrise alerts. Sunscreen sales would skyrocket and garlic? Garlic would be the new gold. And what about our governmental systems? Perhaps we'd see the emergence of night councils, governing bodies that operate when the sun goes down, ensuring the safety and rights of the nocturnal populace. Blood banks would probably see a surge in demand, not for medical purposes, but for sustenance. Vampires in the workforce? That's another interesting thought. They'd be perfect for those graveyard shifts, wouldn't they? Just think about it. 24-hour productivity, round-the-clock services. The economy could potentially thrive. But let's not forget the more personal aspects. How would we deal with our friends, family, or loved ones turning? Would we shun them or accept them, fangs and all? It's a thought-provoking question and one that tests the boundaries of our humanity. While it's fun to speculate, the existence of vampires remains, for now, a captivating mystery. From ancient folklore to modern fiction, the vampire has endured, capturing our fascination and fear. We've journeyed through time, tracing their origins in old myths and legends, and watched as they evolved from monstrous creatures of the night to complex figures embodying both good and evil. We've considered their dual nature, contemplating the stark contrast between the benevolent, misunderstood creatures seeking to coexist and the malevolent, bloodthirsty beasts that lurk in the shadows. We've even dared to imagine a world where these creatures still roam the earth in the year 2023, posing thought-provoking questions about coexistence and survival. Indeed, the vampire's timeless appeal lies in its ability to mirror our own complexities and fears. Whether they exist or not, one thing is certain. The allure of the vampire will continue to captivate us. If you enjoyed our journey into the night, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more intriguing tales.